Fernando Soares' study in B minor is a, a just a kind of an essential classical guitar piece for every guitar player. Um, it is a fairly simple, on one hand, arpeggio exercise, but it also offers all kinds of opportunities for really bringing out the melody. What we kind of have here are three voices, more or less. We've got a, a bass note that, for every measure, sometimes two, that kind of outlines the harmony of it. And then we have a very simple melody, usually just two notes in a measure, sometimes even just one, where if we just pay attention to the melody. That's what we're trying to hear above everything else. So when we play each of these sections, you need to be aware of the three separate parts independently. We'll be talking about in this measure, here's the melody, here's the bass, and then there are the filler notes that are the, arpe the notes of the arpeggio that are just in there to fill in the chord. So it, you really have to be thinking about a lot of things in here. Then we also want to take advantage of tempo changes, slowing down, speeding up, retards, which is slowing down. but um, and even for Mata's, there are spots where I, where I want to rest. Before it kicks in to, to the next section. Now, it does require a lot of bars, as you saw probably from what, what you know, uh, you're going to have to hold a bar down at the second fret in a, lot of, in a lot of places. We have a bar at the fourth later on as we go to C-sharp 7. We're also going to be talking about the chords that are really happening there, and it's something that is really important for you, for any piece you're playing, it's good to have a um, kind of understanding of the harmonic structure of the piece because what we have in this is I really think of it as three 16 measure sections and we will break them down into then sections A, B, and C and section A is nothing really but B minors and the dominant chord in B minor, F sharp F sharp 7 sometimes and that's all we have, well no, we do have a G chord in there and an A7 chord. There's a few other little little changes. The harmony gets, in the very beginning, I think the first eight measures or so, yeah, even more, are, are really just those two chords. But we will we'll talk about all that as we go. So, um, also, Soar tended to do things, didn't use his third finger, his ring finger, very much. But there are spots in here where we're going to want, want to do that. Um, I tend to do most of the arpeggios here because usually it's back and forth on two strings for a beat or two before it might change to a different pair of strings. And for the consistency of tone, I like to do most of it with my index and my, my middle finger. And then just bring in my, my ring finger when we have things like, uh, like down here at the, at the bottom. Where is it? Ah. For that little set of notes, your ring finger is really important to use up on the first string. So, um, that's just kind of my preliminary thoughts on this, but uh, now we'll go through a couple sections. I'll bring, in, come, bring the camera in a little bit closer here, and we'll just talk our way through each of the sections in Soar's study in B minor. Section 8 opens up with our B minor chord, and we're going we're gonna to play most of the B minors, well, with, with a full bar, but when we don't need the B in the bass, they're going to just be partial bars. Really important thing here, and in many songs, uh, to really bring out the melody notes, we want to separate the bass notes and the melody notes when they happen together on the same beat. So in the very beginning, we don't want to do this. And start with that B and the D together. Play the bass note first and the D a little bit late. And that really helps, and then really accent that, that B so that it, it cuts through because the next few notes in that measure we want to blend into the background. What we need to hear again as the melody here is this. Now we, we mix in bass notes with that. arpeggio notes, and we have the, the sum of a steady flow of six, six eighth notes that pretty much happen in every measure, except measures where we have cadences where it comes to rest. So, in this measure, if I just play all of these notes equally, and like a, like a typewriter, that's not particularly musical. We need to let it breathe a little bit and separate the bass note from the D in the beginning and then savor that for a second. And 
then let the other notes kind of blend in and then, and then try to accent that D again when it happens later. And I, now I switch my right hand, as I mentioned, when, I play, when that melody note in the second measure goes up to the F sharp, I, go, I take my second finger up there.